uh, good morning friends uh, today we will see the new verb known as accept uh, uh, accept is basically used to get values from a the JCL uh, through a special DD name known as Sysin. Um, <clears throat> now, if you see here, this is the syntax accept identifier one, which is nothing but a variable. Uh, if we, from is an optional clause, if I don't code from, that is basically it means it is getting the variable from an external uh, system such as JCL. But if I code the keyword from, that means it is picking up from the system variable uh, which are such as date, day, day of week and time. Now date if you see the it's a pick 9 of 6 uh, although you can give anything else also it will still work in your program if you try to give a different pick clause for the working storage variable where you are finally moving the date uh, to. Uh, so typically this is of 9 of 6 uh, which is of the format uh, year YY month MM and date TD day of week is a single byte numeric uh, which is having values from 1 to 7 typically 1 stands for monday 2 for tuesday so on and 7 for sunday uh, julian day that is day uh, that is of the form uh, yyddd the ddd is basically the number of uh, elapsed days from the start of the year for example if it's january 31st 2017 it will be 17031 if it's Feb 1st uh, 2017, it will be uh, 17032 and this is pick 9 of 5. Likewise, time is hours, minutes, seconds and split seconds. So that is 9 of 8. Now uh, let's see how uh, we are uh, uh, going to check this in the same, uh, you know, in the mainframe environment. Now, as I told you, uh, this is another program which I have coded uh, wherein we are just accepting the uh, the first name and the last name in a JCL and then displaying a full name. So if you see here first name and last name are 0 5 levels under the 0 1 level WS name. I am accepting first name and last name in a JCL and then displaying a full name. Uh, like uh, instead of stop run I have used go back. Go back is another uh, this one which gives the control back to the next higher level wherever the control is uh, you know. Uh, obtained from uh, normally typically we use for a single standalone program stop run but go back will also work because it returns the control to the next higher level we'll see how what go back and uh, exit program and program are there when we are seeing the calling programs through uh, the call uh, literal uh, for the time being we'll just park it here so this is it i'm accepting the first name i'm accepting the last name and i'm displaying the full name which is nothing but the, the zero one level and then I am returning control back to the OS. So let's go to the compile JCL. Uh, now this is my proc 003 uh, which I have just coded now. So we will just compile it. See if there are any errors. Okay went through fine it gave a return code 0 now let's run it now if you see here this is the program name sysout is used for the display of this one sysin for accepting values since we are accepting two values it is chris as the first name and gail as the second name and finally we want to print it as a single name now if you look at uh, this uh, here hmm. now if you look at this uh, I am not coded the from keyword here. I am just accepting the values. And I cannot give a comma here. Remember, accept is for accepting a single line or stream of data. So basically, if you see here, uh, I am giving Chris separately and Gail separately. I cannot give, uh, like, uh, let me just show you here. I cannot give accept WSF name, comma WSL name. I cannot give two values uh, here, the same line. So I'll have to give in separate uh, this one. And finally, I'm displaying the program. Now let's just uh, submit this. Oh, this is fine. Now this is what we have just created. The run JCL. I'm submitting it. I gave a return code zero. Now let's go into this pool. And this is out. You can see full name Chris Gale. There is a space here because that is pick X of ten. If you see. From Chris, there is 10 bytes, and then Gale starts from the 11th byte, and then that's how the name is displayed. Okay. Now, if you see here, there is a from keyword, 
from is typically used when you want to pick up something from the system itself. Now here uh, we did not code from in my first example. So because it from was an optional keyword as I told you last time, uh, it's in uh, square uh, brackets which is generally used for optional uh, variables, optional uh, control card parameters. Now let's see an example where I have coded from also. Uh, let's just go there. This is the first this is the program. We'll come to another program. Now if you see here, these are typically uh, I have coded two uh, working storage variables wherein the final uh, it's like the destination where the final uh, output is going to be stored. In the procedure division, accept WS date from date. Now this is the system date. Likewise, uh, accept WS time from the system time, day of week from the system day of week and day which is the Julian day from the system Julian day. So I am finally displaying. The only difference is the from and the keyword. Look, see whenever you are coding, it's always a good practice to give high copy here so that all the COBOL keywords are highlighted. Okay. So now this we are done with it. So we just come out of it and we need to compile it. So I will directly go to the spool. I will come out of this run JCL. Now the first one is compile JCL. I will have to just change the program name here. Let me compile the program for here. Now submit it. If you see, give a return code 0. So good to go. Let's run the JCL now. Now it is prog 004 which has been coded. So I will change the program name. Now since we are not accepting anything from the JCL, I will delete these lines because there is no requirement for the system now. Now everything is accepted from the system itself. So I am just displaying in the sysout. So if you see here in the sysout, system date is today is uh, 22nd April. So why by 22nd April? Uh, 2017, 17, 04, 22. System time is now it's uh, <clears throat> uh, 2.44, so it's uh, displaying the correct time. Uh, 14, 44, uh, 47, this one. System day of uh, week, uh, day of week is uh, 6, that is today is Saturday. Uh, system Julian day is 17, 112, that is 22nd of April, corresponds to the 112th day after the first day. Okay. So now that is what we saw here. Next display we have already seen. Now let's come and move statement. Okay, move is typically used to move value from one variable to another variable. So let's go back to the JCL. Come out of this cobbler. Now we'll create another copy just for a simple. Copy in the same library and oops, uh, return dot cobol dot source script. We'll copy, we'll make a copy of it here itself. Well done. Dot source script. There you go. Created a copy. I'll change the name to from zero five. Now uh, let's say I'll just have a variable called test. Pick nine, pick x of six. So I'll just give pick x of six. Value a b c d e f. Okay. Now, now this is my test output. So I'll have x of six. So let's assign. A value to it as uh, right something like this. After I forgot the dot in the previous line, so I'm putting it back. So now what I'll do? I'll remove these accept lines since we are okay. I deleted the procedure engine line, so I just put it after here. I had to put procedure division and I'll delete this line. 
I'll display before movement values as values. Likewise, I'll have an after uh, after moment values. Now, what is the first variable? That is WS test. So, we'll just okay. Now, I'll delete this line. I'll just repeat that line. So it's easier for me to change. Now the next one is the output one, so I'll just put the test over. Okay. Now I'll again uh, have the same this one here, so I'll delete this line. I'll copy these two after this. Now here uh, after the I'll have to write a move statement move ws test to ws test of just to see the before and after values okay everywhere i given a dot and uh, let's go back to our conventional one where we give stop run it makes more sense only when we have calling programs or when we are using kicks then we will see why we are giving go back Okay, so before that, this one, whatever the value here, ABCD and Rachel will be displayed here. Now we have moved whatever is there in WS test to test O, so both will be displaying ABCD. Hope that's clear now. So we'll just execute this just to see how it goes. Come back, we'll have to compile first. So go to prog 005. Okay. That's it. We'll just submit it. It gave a return code zero. It's a pretty simple one. So don't see any issue with this unless you miss a dot or something like that. So again we'll execute it. So we'll go there, we'll submit it. Once we submit it, we'll again we'll have to go to the spool. That is we are actually doing the changes in the spool itself. So if you see the before values. WS test is ABCDF and WS test O is rational and after movement values will be ABCDF and ABCDF because we have moved whatever was the values here. So, so basically it's a destructive move. I can also move a constant. Okay. Now instead of uh, uh, directly moving like this I can also move a constant. Let's uh, go to the this one. Then. Let's say I have not uh, coded this, uh, I don't have a value and I will not have the before and after the values. Well, you can just have a display whatever was initially. If it has a garbage values, then it will display garbage values. Now we'll do the move. Move uh, since it's a character, this one I'll have to put in quotes. A move A B C D E F. Whatever it is, insert to both test O and test. We'll move different values. So we'll just go A B C D E F. Test. Here, what we are doing before whatever is the contents, we have not uh, initialized the variable, so it will have garbage values, so whatever uh, you know, non displayable characters. So now, once we move the, this one, uh, these two first two lines will be blank, uh, the other two lines will be displaying as ABCDF and ABCDF. We we'll just check that now. We are moving directly a constant to a variable, so we come out of it, it's automatically saved. F9. So 
done the changes so every time you are making any changes you will have to compile the program so we are submitting it back again went through now we will again execute it If you see here, the first two lines are blank, and the second two lines are test for the mode from a constant A B C D F, and this one A B C E F D. This is what the constant which I have moved. Okay, so this is a simple move. Um, uh, likewise, uh, you there is something known as a group move, where I can move from one group variable where I am having a zero one level under which I have many zero five or uh, sub levels, whatever levels you have coded there. Uh, you can do a group move and you can do an uh, let's say zero five but remember one thing uh, as far as possible uh, the movement has to be uh, happening from the same levels that is like you know the move we cannot move uh, zero one level to a zero five level kind of thing so keep the move uh, this one as uh, in sync with the level uh, this one whatever you have given okay so we will see something known as a reference modification it's not there in the slide but i'll just show you in the mainframe itself now let's go back to shoot back. let's go to the cobol program we'll see what is the let's say have a value a b c d e f okay value Let's say pointer. Sorry, sorry. Single quotes and dot. Always I forget this. Dot is very critical for all your you know, statements. So now, initially, I'm just displaying the whatever is the value here. Now, in reference modification, what I can do is. I can selectively move from one variable to another variable. For example, let's say move WS test open the brackets start position and the length to the destination. If you are seeing here what is this is this is called reference modification and this was started only in cobol 85 we the, the it was not available in uh, cobol 74 or cobol uh, 1 what we refer to as cobol 85 is generally referred to as vs cobol 2 so in vs cobol 2 we had the reference modification wherein you know you can actually move uh, this is basically moving a substring of a particular uh, variable into another variable so what i'm doing is i'm moving the first three bytes if you are seeing here first one two three this is the start position and this is the length okay now once we are done this before and after uh, obviously the source is uh, untouched so it will be remain as it is only the destination will change okay we we'll just come out of it now we'll just again go back there now again i need to compile it so i'll do a show just here Submit it. We just submit it. Go here, come here. If you see here, the source is intact since we have moved only the first three bytes. The entire thing is overwritten. Move is destructive in the target. Okay.